Hi everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So, I've broke down and I've been buying some new glassware. Uh, the first shipment just came in and I've got this uh, separatory funnel, this uh, two-necked flask, a little elbow, and I already had this. So to celebrate, I thought I'd try my hand at the anthroquinine process for the production of hydrogen peroxide. So this is all catalytic. The anthroquinine is first hydrogenated and then oxidized, and then I can uh, react that with water to produce hydrogen peroxide and anthroquinine. So I need uh, the anthroquinine, of course, uh, palladium to aid in the catalytic hydrogenation of this, and a couple of organic solvents. This is some xylol and some octanol. Uh, Nonpolar to dissolve the anthroquinine, and polar to dissolve the hydrogenated anthroquinine. Now I think I could use a lower order alcohol such as methanol or ethanol, but I also need something that doesn't dissolve well in water, so I had to use the higher order octanol. There's not a whole lot of literature on this process, so I'm going to have to kind of make some assumptions. Let's uh, see if I can do it. Now since this process is catalytic, I probably don't need to really measure the ingredients too carefully since everything is going to be reused multiple times in the reaction. So there's the anthroquinine. And I'm mostly just doing this for a test to see if I can do it. If I can, maybe I'll uh, scale up at some point and make uh, industrial quantities. And there's a little bit of palladium. I'm also doing a very small amount, you know, just in case this explodes or something. Uh, it gets all over everything. It's not very soluble, is it? Alright, it's dissolving, it's just taking a while. Now let's add a little bit of the uh, octanol to dissolve the hydrogenated form. Okay. Get that all mixed up. Uh, the xylol should be miscible in the alcohol, so I think we're good. Let's get that put into the reaction flask. So I may have this in a heating mantle, but I don't intend to heat it. I'm just using this for the stirring. Got a little stir bar in there. I'm going to put on a strong stirring so I can get that all whipped up into a froth. Let's actually turn that off for now. Right now I'm uh, assembling the glassware. So I've got some uh, high vacuum grease on all the joints. So I am going to vacuum out all the air. I don't want any uh, oxidation to be occurring while I'm working, so I need to remove all the oxygen. Okay, so I just added in some acid. This is some sulfuric acid that I diluted with muriatic acid, and I'm going to be dropping that down onto some zinc in order to generate the hydrogen. But for now, i got to get rid of the air, so I'm going to be using it as an airlock. So let's turn on the vacuum. Take out the air, you can see my acid boiling. The pump is really liking it. Okay, and now I'm going to open the stopcock to let the air out of the rest of the system. I'm going to slowly do it. Hopefully the acid doesn't drip down into the zinc. It shouldn't. Alright, seems to be working. Alright, that seems to have worked. As you can see, the there's a little bit of acid in there already reacting with the zinc. I'm going to add in just a little bit more. Get this reaction going. Okay. And theoretically, once I've reached atmospheric pressure in here, more acid shouldn't fall out. Yeah, uh, the acid is reacting with the metal slowly. And so I'm going to end up with an excess of acid in here, which means I could very easily overshoot the hydrogen production. So let's actually undo one of these clamps so that if it does explode, it'll 
It'll blow off there rather than over here or something. And I think what I'm going to do then is add in all of the acid and then leave this open so that I can vent the pressure. Ah, so here we go. I've reached a point where the hydrogen is leaving the system rather than water going in. Let that go as fast as it's being made. So now I've got one atmosphere of pressure worth of hydrogen inside the system. I turned on the stirring. You can see there it's whipping it around. And now I can let it hydrogenate. This could take a while. Uh, I've got an audio book going and I'm just going to kind of sit here and watch things. There's a little bit of a color change going on here. Uh, I don't know what the hydrogenated version of the anthraquanine looks like, so I'm going to assume it's green. <laughs> because uh, the solution is turning green. This has been going for about half an hour. You can see it's definitely a different color. But I've noticed that the hydrogen has stopped bubbling. Let's open this up a little bit more. Yeah. It's pulling a vacuum, actually, even though the hydrogen is still reacting with the zinc, you know, being produced from the zinc. So it tells me the hydrogen's going somewhere. Hopefully it's being absorbed into this. So I've now gone for about two and a half hours. You can see the solution is still green. Let's check the pressure. Yeah, it's under vacuum. So something's happened to all that hydrogen. I'm going to shut her down. We're going to continue the process. It's probably not gone as far as I could go, but I should get something, right? So let me actually shut down the stirring. And I guess we'll let the air in. There we go. Alright. Now we gotta get this filtered. I've got the vacuum filter set up and I'm gonna tip this into it. And the idea here is to get rid of all the palladium because the metallic palladium will cause the peroxide to decompose. So we want to get rid of it before the peroxide is formed. Apparently we got a bunch of stuff that never dissolved. Alright. Okay, good. Alright. So now that it's all filtered, I'm going to put it back into this. Drop in a clean stir bar. Focus the camera. <laughs> and I'm just going to let it uh, sit here and absorb some air. Might even set up a bubbler and kind of force the air into it. Probably not necessary. Got an air pump here. Blow some air into the chamber just to help it out. Okay, about half an hour later, I'd say that's probably pretty well mixed with air. So let's transfer this off into the separatory funnel. I wonder if I should filter it. Yeah, it's probably fine. Okay. And now I'm going to add in a little bit of water as well. So now I'm just going to take this and shake it up so that the water can get at the peroxide. Now that it's all mixed up, Shook it for several minutes. I'm just going to let it settle out. Hopefully we'll have a solution of peroxide. So sometime later, 
Got a nice layer of clear liquid water at the bottom. Let's uh, transfer that out into a little beaker. We'll see if we got any peroxide in it. Okay, looks like I got a little bit of the solvent through. That should be good enough to test. So to test for the presence of peroxide, I'm going to add some uh, potassium iodide, which is dissolved in water, and a little bit of soap. So we'll see what happens here. If there's peroxide present, we should see a slight color change to brown. Okay. Now we should see some oxygen gas being liberated. And it's not foaming up like I would expect. Hmm. The color change was correct. Maybe my test is off. So here's some 3% uh, drugstore peroxide. Let's do the same thing to it. I got a little bit left here. Okay, same color change. Uh, that one's not foaming up either. Okay, so that means there's something wrong with my test. Maybe the peroxide is just not strong enough. Uh, I'll go break open an alkaline battery. Let's use manganese dioxide. Okay. So I've busted the end of this battery, so we've got a little bit of manganese. This thing you can see lots of foam. Alright, let's do the same thing over here. Okay. Tiny little bit of peroxide. Not very much though. So obviously I need to improve my process quite a bit. I'll get to work on that then. Maybe I need to run it for longer. And don't waste so much hydrogen. Definitely made peroxide. Iodine wouldn't have changed like that if there wasn't an oxidizer present. Okay. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.